Hey all here at OS Reviews. In this closer dive, we're taking a comparative look between Chrome OS on Chromebooks versus Android OS on Android tablets. So heading into 2018 and beyond, Chromebooks are getting more and more versatile and powerful just because updates now make it possible for it to run the Play Store and essentially download uh, and have all of the Android apps on a Chromebook in addition to having a desktop class Chrome browser, which Android tablets currently do not have. Sure, you have access to the Chrome app, which can load desktop versions of sites, but it's consistently, and by that I mean roughly 20 to 25% slower uh, when it comes to loading complex sites uh, compared to a real desktop version of the, of the platform, like on a Chromebook or on a Windows or Mac computer. So let's go over some of the core differences going forward. So for this comparative video, I'll be using two examples with uh, similar specs in terms of the hardware. I have a Lenovo Yoga Book, which is a 10.1 inch two in one and i'm using it because chromebooks at the moment are still all going to be netbook like in that sense they have a keyboard and they don't have a detachable screen although more and more have touch screens and can swivel back uh, it used to be that uh, android tablets were just tablets as is but as the demand for productivity and for typing out messages increased we now see more convertibles in tablet form factors as well so the yoga book has a included keyboard which is on the base but it's still not quite as good as a real island or chiclet style layout it's a touch based keyboard which is the innovative part uh, but there are other more traditional two-in-ones as well with a detachable design, although the keyboards are still a little bit more squished together uh, compared to a real kind of a netbook-like design which has an included hinge that can't be removed. Going back here, we have access to a 11.6 inch screen on the Chromebook, which is the most common screen size. And underneath the hood, we have access to a Intel Atom X5 series processor on the Android tablet, which is quad core versus a dual core Intel Celeron processor. Now the Celeron versus the Atom in terms of the benchmark test and CPU benchmarks are actually about the same in terms of the raw processing power. Both of these also come with four gigs of RAM. So in terms of functional multitasking, they also should be quite similar. So let's start with uh, a quick look and a refresher of the Chromebook. So as aforementioned, it's more of a traditional design that opens up in this clamshell-like hinge. And in the case of our example HP Chromebook 11 G5, it does not have a fully rotating or detachable hinge. With that being said, it does have a touchscreen display that is capacitive and coded by Corning's Gorilla Glass 3, just like on the Lenovo Yoga Book. It's also an IPS panel that offers view, uh, generous viewing angles, although it's a 720p panel. Over on the Yoga Book, it's much of the same story. Another IPS panel that gets slightly brighter, but also the same Corning Gorilla Glass multi-touch display. It has a 1080p resolution, however. With that being said, the battery life is definitely one area where the majority of Chromebooks will trump Android-based tablets, especially since there are so many different Android tablets running on various processors from Spectrum to uh, Rockchip to MediaTek and even Intel, as we have here. The Yoga Book will get you a estimated 11 hours of battery life, but in real world usage, we hardly reach that metric. In fact, we commonly only got seven to eight hours of continuous web browsing with the screen on half brightness before the battery drained. On the other hand, the Chromebook also has a rated 12 hour battery life, but in real world use, we got around 11 hours plus with uh, web browsing complex pages. So that's an area where the general uh, Chromebook, which is around 10 hours in terms of battery life, will be longer than the average Android tablet, which will give you roughly eight hours or so, sometimes seven hours uh, on average across the board. So let's look at the operating systems. Chrome OS has this desktop class bar on the very bottom, and since we have a touchscreen model, we can swipe up to have access to all the apps, very similar to a Google launcher on a Pixel phone. It's very sleek, it's responsive, there's a universal search that goes through all our apps, as well as web content for a simplified overall experience, and vertical lists that goes through all of our installed applications and Android apps. On the side, we can tap here to change the Wi-Fi settings, as well as the brightness, as well as sign in and out of our account, which is link to our uh, Google Play services. And at the moment, you're unable to add apps onto this uh, wallpaper screen in the background. It's just showing an image, which you can change. Uh, I can also long hold to have access to, again, a very Mac or Windows style uh, advanced settings for changing the wallpaper or shuffling the shelf, but I can't actually drag these apps into the back page over here. 
Over on the Android side of things, we have access to a pretty different uh, layout. So if you've used an Android phone in the past, you should uh, you know, be right at home. We have access to virtually unlimited pages to customize with our favorite apps and programs. There's still gonna be access to a list of all of your commonly used apps. And since that uh, we are using the Lenovo Yoga Book, Lenovo has customized the Android experience to give us a launcher that's a very similar in style to something like a Chromebook. But as a whole, there's a bit more customization. I can, of course, add widgets, as well as a change around with some of the additional advanced settings. So at the moment, Android OS, as far as the UI is concerned, is definitely more customizable. It's also a little bit more complicated. Um, there's a drag down notification shade for changing things like weather. And again, it's uh, closer to what you find on the phone, but just on a larger display compared to Chrome OS, which is really designed to be used and interacted with just like on any other computer. When it comes to access to Google Play apps, uh, Android tablets for the most part will still have a slight edge over Chromebooks, although performance in both are roughly the same. And that's because Chromebooks is really running an emulator on top uh, for the apps to open and run. They can still be full screened, but on the Android, we have the native experience, which seems to load ever so slightly faster. And sometimes you also get smoother frame rates as well as the ability to take a look at more upscaled resolutions. And on the G5, it's much of the same story. We can tap on the Play Store and it opens up in about the same amount of time and we have access to the same selection of apps. Again, no real problems. There's again a bit more stuttering and slowdown sometimes uh, just because it's running more as an emulated uh, experience on top of the Chrome OS operating system. But again, we have access to the same amount of apps, uh, including 3D games, productivity tools, some of them which have even been recommended for Chromebooks with uh, slightly optimized interfaces and it all works quite well. When it comes to camera and multimedia experience, that's where Android tablet still has an edge, and that's because we still have uh, better quality sensors as an average across most Android tablets, such as on this Yoga Book. We also have two cameras as well. There's a secondary camera on the back, like on many other designs, that allows us to snap images if you don't have a, a smartphone to use when in the moment. And now going back to web browsing, which is arguably the most important tenet of all of these uh, features. And that's where again, Chromebook and uh, Chrome OS really shines because we have a true desktop class browser that imports all of your bookmarks across your standard version of uh, Chrome that you've probably used on a Windows or Mac computer, including everything. Once you just sign in, it takes less than 20 seconds to boot up completely. And then everything is ready and set up. And it feels like you've been using this computer for much longer than you actually have versus Android, which as you can see here on the same exact page, it's actually still loading up. Um, it's uh, again about 20 to 30 percent slower when loading up desktop versions of sites like the New York Times, complex pages. It uh, will definitely struggle a little bit more. And part of the reason I suspect is because Android OS, again, it's closer to, you know, ironically enough, it's closer to a more traditional operating system where you have many background processes for it to run, including, you know, wallpapers on the background in addition to other apps. Uh, the Android OS, which is a definitely more heavy and complex than Chrome OS. It's a much lighter build, whereas all the resources here are essentially being put into the browser. So everything is concentrated. And as a result, we have uh, the fastest loading experience uh, using the same type of uh, processing power on paper. Um, so again, if you're doing a lot of web browsing, especially across pages like the New York Times, or you're also visiting other uh, formal, let's say company websites, that's uh, an instance where you'll feel a very big difference between using a Chromebook, which feels like a regular laptop, a very powerful machine, and an Android tablet, which uh, still feels kind of like a toy or using your smartphone in many ways. And the same thing goes when it comes to typing and entering productivity. Uh, again, on the Yoga Book, we're fortunate enough to have a attached keyboard, which you can at least use when resting on the palm of your laps, but it's not nearly as comfortable as a uh, more spacious and real keyboard, an island chiclet that we have on an actual Chromebook like the G5. These are more virtual touch-based keys. Again, sure, you can add a Bluetooth keyboard or um, add another accessory, but it's just not as convenient when it comes to toting around. You have to pair it, you have to wake it up from sleep, whereas with this, you just simply pop open the lid and you're ready to go. And you really do save on quite a bit of time uh, You know that adds up when you're using this product for many years down the road. So when it comes to instant productivity, uh, the IO is definitely stronger on a Chromebook where you have a great keyboard, a great touchpad, which you don't have on many Android tablets, you have to use the touchscreen only. And there's also more IO, including full-size USB ports and full-sized HDMI ports. So that's more or less it as far as our closer dive, uh, comparative look at uh, Android tablets versus Chromebooks going forwards. And in my personal opinion, I would say that uh, Chromebooks are indeed going to be the future, um, as well as a potential replacement for Android tablets, mostly because I think 
Google got their bet absolutely right when they thought that the web browser would be the center anchor point of everything you do on a computer. And with one of the best, fastest, uh, most lightweight and well-optimized desktop class browsers on a Chromebook, you're getting a false, far superior web browsing experience coupled with excellent I.O. and the fact that the battery life is great, plus you get the bonus features of basically all of the Android apps going forwards, uh, which are more or less the same as far as the basic functionality and experience is concerned compared to an and actual Android tablet. There it really isn't a huge difference and the gap is narrowing. And I think for most folks, they'll realize that uh, with a Chromebook, there's definitely a bit more of a faster optimized uh, performer. So in my opinion, this is definitely the future going forwards, replacing laptops. And for many people, at least it's all you re really need to get by. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. That was a closer dive comparison between Google's Chrome OS and Android OS heading forwards. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.